Hey guys, I'm back with chapter 3. This is the episode where I paint the hands of my sadhu at the burning ghat in Varanasi. Enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe and hit like. Thanks. Let's get started on painting the hand. First, I like to paint the context around it, like the sleeve and a little bit of the background, just so we can judge the value and the color temperature off of the surrounding elements. For instance, I know that both the sleeve and the hand have to come out a lot darker than that gray background behind them. The reason why is that I want the hand and the sleeve to come forward and I want the background to show atmospheric perspective. So it kind of helps to paint in the background first and then go on top of it with the hand so I'll be able to make sure that it's darker. By the way, atmospheric perspective simply means showing the effect that air has, oxygen has, on the way we see backgrounds and landscapes. So for instance, the further the distance is between you and what you're looking at, like in a landscape, the more atmospheric perspective it's gonna have, so the more hazy it's gonna look. It's gonna have less contrast, higher value, and typically have colder temperature colors. So usually when we're painting a figure in front of a background to help push the figure forward and help get the background to recede, we employ this atmospheric perspective and we make sure that our background is significantly lighter and less contrast than our subject so that the subject can come forward in space. As I'm painting the base colors for this hand, I'm actively aware of the colors that are happening around it and how they interact with each other. For example, I know that the red scarf that he has on is bouncing red light into the inside of his palm so you can see it's very warm there. And the cold skylight is hitting all the top planes of the hand. So those top planes are gonna be lighter and much colder. I'm just painting in those background elements right now and I'm still trying to establish that atmospheric perspective and that lowered contrast as compared to the hand that's so much closer to us. So that's why you see me taking a little bit of extra time to fill in some of the things in the background. I wanna see that feeling of the hand coming forward and once that feels right, I don't need to keep working on the background at this moment. I want to indicate the lighter color of the nails inside that palm, but I have to be very careful right now to not make the value too light or the edges too hard or else we'll jump out of the shadow. So now you're seeing what is actually a much later point in the chronological history of the painting. This is after I already completed the background, but I noticed that his pinky finger was much too big to be a pinky finger. So you're just watching me paint over the pinky finger and then paint it back in at a much smaller scale. I'm starting that second hand now. It's almost entirely submerged in shadow, except for that knuckle that catches a little bit of light. Since this hand is entirely in shadow, like always, you have to be careful with the values and the edges. You don't want that value range, that contrast to be too high. So make sure you keep it close together and you observe the different color temperatures that are happening. His skin seems to be picking up a lot of sky blue on the top of it. So I made sure to mix that in. There also appears to be a significant amount of warm bounce light coming from the right. I assume from the sun hitting the ground and jumping back into the hand. I'm just carefully painting in some structure to that knuckle that's catching that little bit of light. And you gotta make sure that this is a warm sunlight and cold shadow situation. So that knuckle's gonna have more warm tones than the shadow does.
there's actually another bit of sunlight hitting a vein right near that first spot. So I'm denoting that now as well. What I'm painting in right now is called the core shadow. This is an area of light where neither the direct light nor the influence of the bounce light in the shadow side enters that area. So it's actually the darkest area of a shadow. And it usually happens in places like this where there's a direct light, then it transitions over into the shadow side with this bounce light, but between it, you find these areas of core shadow that are very important to put down. The shapes of these deep darks give us an opportunity to show off the structure and the anatomy of the hand and its knuckles. It's time to take care of that thumb and reshape the anatomy to be a little bit more correct and indicate the nail. When painting hands, one of the critical things to get right is these lines that separate the fingers and indicate where the finger starts. So I missed the mark on a couple of them and I had to raise the starting point of the fingers to make it correct. This warm bounce light that's going into the pinky is actually very helpful to indicate some of the pinky's anatomy. So I'm taking good care of it and going slowly. I'm just re-emphasizing the warm bounce light on that finger by repainting it with some thicker paint. The wrist feels a little bit thin, so as I make my adjustments all around the hand, you see I expanded the wrist a little bit to correct that. There's a slight indication of a vein that I'm about to put in on the upper hand, and I have to be careful as I do it to make sure that that hand doesn't end up looking too detailed for something that's in the shadow. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And in the next episode, you're going to see how I painted the background. Don't forget to subscribe if you like these and catch the next episode.